Welcome to lesson 14, again, of equivalent fractions. And today we're going to be looking at our fraction wall and seeing how, even though a numerator and denominator might be different, how some fractions together can have the same amount and be equal. So I know we looked at this at lesson 11 the other day, but I just wanted to look at it one more time. So we know that equivalent means equal and equivalent fractions must be the same size or amount. They have the same value, the same total value. And they show the same amount, but use different numerators and denominators sometimes. My question for you today is how do multiples help us with equivalent fractions? Now it's important to remember the difference between a multiple and a factor. Factors are what we can multiply to get to that number. So for example, 12, my factors of 12 are what we can multiply to get to 12. So one in 12, two in six, three in four are my factors of 12. Multiples are different. Multiples are what we get after we multiply a number by an integer or another number. So for example, our multiples of two is our two times table. And multiples can go on forever. If we looked at our multiples of two, it would be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, essentially counting, skip counting in that number. Same thing for multiples of five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. They can go on and on and on and on. The question is though, how do multiples help us with our equivalent fractions? Well, we can use multiples to see if we have an equivalent fraction. If those numbers, if the numerator and denominator are part of the same multiple, they might be equivalent fractions. Let's have a look at this a bit clearer. Here, I've actually done an example of your challenge, and this is what we call a rainbow equivalent fraction. You can see that I've started with half. Now, it's very important with equivalent fractions that you remember what happens to the top must happen to the bottom. So whatever happens to the numerator must happen to the denominator. So here, I've times the numer numerator by two, so then I've times my denominator also by two. So I get two quarters. So I know that two quarters is the same as a half. This time, I've multiplied it by three. My numerator by three, so I get three. My denominator by three, I get six. So I know that three six is equivalent to a half. Same thing, now this time I've done multiplied by six. My numerator by six, one times six is six, and my denominator by six, two times six is 12. I stopped at eight, but this could go on and on and on and on. So you see how your multiples can actually help you with your equivalent factors. What you need to remember though, is what happens to the top must happen to the bottom. Another example, if we look at our halves here, one half, I've now multiplied each numerator and denominator by two. So one half becomes two quarters. Multiply that by two, denominator and numerator, two quarters becomes four eighths. Carry on, eight sixteenths, sixteen thirty twos, thirty two sixty four, goes on and on and on. I know that these all are equivalent to half. Then I've multiplied those by two. So three times two, six. Six times two, 12. Multiply that by two. 12 times, six times two, 12. 12 times two, 24. And I've carried on. Here we know these are equivalent because they're using our multiples of two. Same thing with third. One third multiply the numerator by three and the denominator by three. What happens to top must happen to the bottom. I get three ninths. Multiply those, both of those by three, I get nine twenty-sevenths. Carry on. Same thing here. Now I've done it four twelfths, which is equivalent to a third, times it by three. Twelve. Twelve times three, thirty-six. 
I've done it again with quarters. So this time I've multiplied it and used my multiples of four. Multiplied my numerator by four and my denominator by four. It gives me four sixteenths. Multiply those by four. Four times four, 16. 16 times four, 64. And I've kept on going. Same thing with five twentieth, which is also a quarter. Five times four, 20. 20 times four, 80. And multiply those. You can go on and on and on and on and on. And that kind of shows you how our multiples can help with equivalent fractions. Let's look at this with a fraction wall this time. Welcome back. Now, I've gone to this website, massbot.com, manipulate this fraction wall, which is a great way to look at a fraction wall and kind of play around with it to see equivalent fractions. The question here is how many equivalent fractions can you make? Already looking at this, we can see many different equivalent fractions for a whole. So I know two halves is a whole, three thirds is a whole, four fourths is, or four quarters is a whole, eight eighths, etc., etc. Twelve twelves, we know that that's a whole. What if I wanted to look at my half though? So I've pulled my half over here. Now I can already look down. Ooh, those would not be a half because only one third, that's less than one half, and then two thirds, two of those is a bit more. But if I look straight down, ah, one quarter is less, but two quarters, let me pull them over and line them up. Two quarters is equivalent to one half. Mm, let's see, let me look at my line again. Oh, fifths wouldn't do. One fifth is too small. Two fifths is too small. Three fifths is too much. Six, let's see, perfect. One sixth, two sixth. And line it up perfectly. Three six. They match. I can even bring this one down. Two six is a perfect. Let's look at our sevenths now. If I put it over, oh no, there's still a little bit of that sevenths. Four sevenths is too much. What about eighths? One eighth is too small, two eighths is too small, three eighths, but four eighths is the same size or equivalent. Ninths, oh, five ninths is just too much. <gasps> tenths, five tenths is equivalent. Elevenths, nope, too much. Ah, but twelfths, how many twelfths do you think is equivalent? Mm, what is half of twelve? Six, let's check. Six twelfths is equivalent to a half. So that's an example. Let's now look at a third. Do we have any that line up? Oh, two six is equivalent to one third. Any others? Three ninths is equivalent to a third. And stop. Four twelfths is equivalent to a third which we know 12 divided by four is equal to three. Six divided by three is equal to two. So you show, you see how our multiples help us with equivalent fractions. Let's look at this again. So if I wanted to look at my whole one, I know that two halves is equivalent to my one. And I know that one fifth, two fifth, three fifth, four fifth, five fifths are also equivalent to my one. My third, one third is equivalent to one sixth, two sixths. Mm. And let's see here two thirds, this time I have two thirds, is equivalent to one six, two six, three six, four six. Now what is happening here? Two times what is equal to four? Two times two. 
and three times what happens to the top must happen to the bottom. So three times two is also six. So you see how what happens to the numerator must happen to the denominator. Same thing here. One times two is equal to two. Three times two is equal to six. Now, let's look at it this way. One half is equal to mm quarters. Well, I can already see here that with one quarters here, two quarters. So one half is equal to two quarters. Let's see, how have I got into here? I've done one multiplied by what to get to two? One times two. And what happens to the top must happen to the bottom. So two times two is equal to four. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here we have it slightly differently because this time we're going from eights to quarters. Now I know that I can't multiply to get a smaller number. I want to divide this time and I know that I want quarters. So eight divided by what is equal to four? Well, we know eight divided by two is equal to four. So what happens to the bottom in this case must happen to the top. So six divided by two is equal to three. And let's see if that's three quarters. One quarter, two quarter, three quarters. Now, on your work today, you have examples like this with your fraction wall cut into different parts and put together. But remember, it's also a great idea to start practicing either multiplying or dividing to try and find that equivalent fraction. And you can use your fraction wall to help you with this, of course, as well. Have fun!